Lucy's no worse. Just the same, sir. Thank you. 
Delirium to fasten a scarf or a shawl. Perhaps. And your daughter's symptoms are the same? Precisely. She too speaks of bad dreams. Then Helsing. You've lived in the tropics. Could this not be something alien to our medical experience here in London? Mm, indeed, <laughs> my friend. Oh. Renfield, how did Who you... Who is this man? One of my patients. This is Rose Kelly. Did That's you hear us talking? Words. 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 Go, come, Renfield. You know you mustn't wander about this way. How did you get out of your room? Wouldn't you like to know? How are the flies? Mr. Renfield makes a hobby of eating flies, and I'm afraid don't you eat spiders too sometimes, don't you, Renfield? Will you walk into my parlor, said the spider to the fly? Excuse me, Doctor, you haven't introduced me to your friend. Come, come, ah, Renfield. Ah, you were him, you were him. Nellie, tell Mr. Bullworth to come here at once. Yes, sir. Very well. <laughs> Professor Van Helsing, Mr. Renfield, one of my patients. Ah, who has not heard of Van Helsing? Your words are investigating certain obscure diseases not altogether unconnected with the forces and powers the ignorant herd do not believe exist, as one you opposition posterity will recognize. Father Perth, let your patient leave his room again. I locked the door on him this time, sir. I got the key in your pocket right now. This is the second time, only last night you let him escape. And we caught him breaking into Count Dracula's house across the grounds. But he didn't get out the door this time, sir. And it's a drop of 30 feet out the windows. He's just a blooming ill. You, you come with me. Renfield, if this happens again, you'll get no more sugar to spread out for your flies. What do I care for flies now? Flies are but poor things. <laughs> a low form of life. Beneath my notice, I don't care a pin for flies. No, don't you? Any more of your tricks and I'll take your new spider away. Oh, no, please, dear Mr. Butterworth, leave me my spider. He's getting so nice and fat. When he's had another dozen flies, he'll be just right. Just right. God, Mr. Redford, what makes you want to eat flies? The wings of the fly, my dear sir, typify the aerial powers of the psychic faculty. Butterworth, take him away. One moment. Uh, and the spiders? Professor Van Helsing, can you tell me why one great spider lived four centuries in the tower of the old Spanish church and grew and grew? He never ate, but he drank and he drank. He would come down and drink the oil from all the church lamps. Butterworth. Mm. One, one moment, Dr. Seward. I want you to send me away, tonight, now, in a straight waistcoat, so I can't escape. My cries will disturb Miss Lucy, who is ill. They will give your daughter bad dreams, Dr. Seward, bad dreams. We'll see about all this in the morning. Why are you so anxious to go? I'll tell you, not that fool Seward, he wouldn't understand, but he'll... <laughs> no! No!
Jesus, apologies. You uh, think my play shockingly managed. Uh, but what was your herb that excited him so? Wolfsbane. Wolfsbane? What's that? I thought I knew all the drugs in the pharmacopoeia. Oh, it is one of the animal fights. Pliny the Elder mentions the plant. It grows only in the wilds of central Russia. Why did you bring it with you? It is a form of um, preventive medicine. Well, we live and learn. Mm. I never heard of it. Sword, I want you to have that lunatic securely washed. Anything you say, but it's my Lucy I want you to look after. Yes, first. yes, I want you to have that man kept under careful observation. He's an interesting maniac, no doubt. But surely you'll see my daughter. Yeah, well, you know, I must see the records of his case. <coughs> Doctor. Oh. Do you think I've forgotten why I am here? Forgive me. Mm. Of course I'll show you the records. Good. They're in my office across the terrace. Right. But I don't understand why you're so interested in renting. A man of your experience, sure, you'll certainly never have more. Lucy, I thought they were here. John, do you think Nina's father can help me? I'm sure he will. Anyway, now that I'm back, I'm going to stay with you till you get over this thing. But can you? You work in town. You come first. I don't think you'd better stay. Sometimes I feel that I should be alone. How can you say that you don't want me here with you when you're so ill? You do love me, don't you? Yes, John, with all my soul. <clears throat> you see, just as soon as you're well enough, I'm going to take you away. We'll get married next month. We won't wait till June. We'll stretch that honeymoon month to three months, and the house will be ready in July. Do you think we could? Of course. Why not? True, my mother wanted us to wait, but she'll understand. Anyway, I want to get you away. Why do you shrink when I kiss you? You're so cold, Lucy. Always so cold now. Forgive me, dear. I am yours. All yours. John, I am so tired. So tired. <coughs> Oh. Lucy, dear, this is Professor Van Helsing. Ah, my dear Miss Stewart. You don't remember Van Helsing. I knew you and you and my Mina played together as little girls. So hi. Now, what charm, what beauty. <coughs> A little pale, perhaps, but we will bring the roses back to the cheeks. And this, no doubt, is the fortunate young man you are to marry. Yes, Jonathan Harker. Look here, Professor. I'm not going to get in your way, but mm. Dr. Sewell will allow it. I'm going to make him give me a bed here until Lucy's over this thing. It's an absolute hell being way in London. Of course, I can't get any work done. Well, you're most welcome to stay, my boy. Yes, yes, indeed. I, I may need you. Now, my dear, if I may thank you. Now, tell me, when did this weakness first come upon you? Two nights after poor Mina was buried, I had a bad dream. A bad dream? Tell me about it. I remember hearing dogs barking before I went to sleep. The air seemed oppressive. I left the reading lamp lit by my bed. But when the dream came, there seemed to come a mist into the room. A mist? So was the window open? Yes, I always sleep with the window open. Well, of course, you are English. We continentals are not so particular about the fresh air. Um, go on, please. The mist seemed so thick that I could just see the lamp by my bed. There was a tiny spark in the fog. And then I saw two red eyes staring at me. And a livid white face looking down on me out of the mist. It was horrible, horrible! Can you go on? The next morning, my maid could scarcely wake me. I felt weak and languid. Some part of my life seemed to have gone from me. Have there been other such dreams? Nearly every night since then has come the mist. The red eyes and that awful face. We've tried transfusion twice, and each time she's recovered her strength. But then would come another dream, and now I dread the night. I know it sounds absurd, Professor, but please don't laugh at me. I'm not likely to laugh. No, no! Oh, it's all right, it's all right. No! It's all right, it's all right. How long have you had these little marks on your throat? Since that first morning. Lucy, why didn't you tell us? Lucy, you've worn that scarf around your throat.
strove to hide them from us. No, no, do not press her. Do not excite her. Well? I didn't want to worry you, for I knew that Mina had them. Quite right, Miss Lucy, quite right. They are nothing. And uh, Van Helsing will make sure that these dreams trouble you no more. Now, if you'll excuse me, there is something I must have for my room. Certainly. Yeah. Did you hear? That big door, the one that belongs to Dasmo, was found early this morning. Dead as a doornail. And its throat torn away, did. Nellie, Miss Lucy is hardly well enough for such talk. Sorry, miss. It was probably some wild beast or other mad dog what done it. Broke torn clear away, you say? Aye, sir. By some savage claw, they say. Count Dracula. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Count. I'm sorry you couldn't join us for dinner. Your invitation was most kind. Perhaps another time, Doctor. Miss Seward, I hope you are feeling improved. Yes, thank you. I don't think she looks a bit well at all. Perhaps a trifle pale. Count Dracula. Mr. Harker. I must thank you for finding me an extraordinary house here in Perth. I'm sorry, I can't see how anyone, except maybe one of my father's patients, could spend even a day at Carfax Abbey. A house, Miss Seward, cannot be made habitable in a day. After all, how few days go into making up a century. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I am of an old family, so living in a new house would be impossible for me. During dinner, we were talking about your shipwreck. Yes, it's a miracle you were not hurt. So it would seem. I cannot express precisely, but there seemed to be a doom over our ship from the moment we left port. Some wine, Count. No, thank you. After dinner, we were looking at the ship's log. It wasn't lost at sea. No, it was found here in the asylum. Yes, Renfield, one of my patients, had it among his belongings. Renfield. The last entry the captain made was a very strange word. Nosferatu. Undead. Not dead. There's a difference. With your permission and all due respect, Miss Seward, there is a distinction. Uh, Count Dracula, may I prevent, or present, excuse me, Professor Van Helsing. A most distinguished scientist whose name we know even in the wilds of Transylvania. My condolences on the death of your daughter. Thank you, Count. Perhaps you should take a look at the log, Count. Maybe you could translate it for us. This is written in an obscure regional dialect. The captain was of the Machia. I am Shekel. Unfortunately, I am unable to translate it for you. FDR and Shekel. I had no idea, Count, that your country was so complex. Oh, it is, Doctor, indeed. Very, very complex. So you've come to England to settle down? No, hardly that. I've come to wander through the crowded streets of London to share in its life, its change, its death. You have a great lust for life, Count. I so look forward to your visits. They seem to make me better. I admire your candor. So I come here to find a rival in the field. Indeed. You encourage me, Miss Seward, to make my visits more frequent as I should like. I am always glad to see you. But you have been lonely here. And my feeble efforts to amuse you with our stories of old will no longer have the same success. Now that Professor Van Helsing is here, and especially now that Mr. Harker is to remain. How did you know I was going to stay, Count? Can the gallant lover ask such a question? I inferred it, my friend. You're right. Nothing's going to shift me now until Lucy's as fit as a fiddle again. Soon to the Lucy's and I want Please to come stay again, Count, won't you? I do not want to leave her alone. Remember, you will not answer that. She must not be left alone for a single moment under any circumstances. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Good. Now, my dear, your maid will take you to your room. Try to rest for a little while. I talk to your father. Uh, Nellie, don't leave her alone for a moment. Oh, no, sir. Come on, Miss Lucy. So you have come from your homeland to cure the nervous prostration of this 
charming girl. I wish you all the success. Thank you, Count. Do I appear officious, Dr. Seward? I am a lonely man, and you are my only neighbors while I'm here at Carfax, and your trouble has touched me greatly. Count, I'm more grateful for your sympathy than I can say. I understand that you are a stranger here in England. Yes, but I love England. And the great London, it's so different from my own Transylvania. So few people and such little opportunity. Opportunity, Count? For my investigations, Professor. I hope you haven't regretted buying that old ruin across there. The Carfax is not a ruin. Its dust is somewhat deep. But we are used to dust in Transylvania, where the walls of my castle are broken. The shadows are many, and I am the last of my race. It's a lonely spot you chose to come back. It is. And when the dogs howl, I picture myself back in my castle Dracula with its broken battlements. Ah, and do the dogs howl there when there are wolves around? They do, my friend. And they howl here as well. Although there are no wolves. But you wish to consult with the anxious father and the great specialist. May I read a book in your study? I am anxious to hear what the professor has to say and to learn if I can be of any help. By all means, Count. Very kind of Count Dracula with his damned untimely friendliness. Now, what about my daughter, that Halsey? Yes, Professor. What do you think is the matter with Lucy? Your patient, that, um, that interesting Renfield, he does not like the smell of wolfsbane. Good heavens, what's that got to do with Lucy? Perhaps nothing. In God's name, Professor, is there anything unnatural or occult about this business? Oh, occult. Well, ah, let me remind you that the superstitions of today are the scientific facts of tomorrow. Science can now transmute the electron, the basis of all matter, into energy, and what is that but the dematerialization of matter? Yet, dematerialization has been known and practiced in India for centuries. In Java, I myself have seen things. My dear old friend, you can't fill up your fine old brain with eastern moonshine. Moonshine? Anyway, come now. What about my daughter? Ah, Seward, if you won't listen to what will be harder to believe than any eastern moonshine, if you won't forget your textbooks, keep an open mind then. Your daughter's life may pay for your pickheadedness. Go on, Professor. I'm listening. Mm. Then I must ask you to listen calmly to what I am going to say. Sit down. You both have heard the legends of Central Europe? About the werewolves? The vampires? You mean ghosts that suck the blood of the living? Yes, if you wish to call them ghosts, I call them the undead. God's sakes, man, are you suggesting that Mina and now Lucy have... Oh, of course I've heard those horrible old folk tales of the Middle Ages, Van Helsing. But I know you better than to suppose... That, that I believe them? I do believe them. You mean to tell us that vampires actually exist? And that Mina and Lucy have been attacked by one? Your English doctors would all laugh at such a theory. Your police, your public would laugh. The strength of the vampire is that people will not believe in him. Yet each night as the lights are put out, the primal fears take precedence. And you find yourself afraid to look behind the curtain and dread to see the face at the window. We call it foolishness and tell ourselves it isn't real. Well, let me reassure you, my friends. Such things do exist. Is this to help you bring us? Oh, do not despise it. Go on, Professor. Well, vampires are rare. Nature opposes them. The forces of good combine to destroy them. Yet, a few of these creatures have lived on for centuries. What is a vampire? A vampire? Or, more precisely, the Nosferatu. Is a man or a woman who is dead and yet is not dead. It is a thing that lives after its death by drinking the blood of the living. It must have blood or it dies. Its power lasts only from sunset to sunrise. During the hours of the day, it must rest in the earth in which it was buried. But during the night, it has the power to prey upon the living. I see that you 
think you will have to put me amongst your patients. I don't know what to think. I confess I simply can't follow you. What makes you think Lucy's been attacked by such a creature? Well, Dr. Seward's written account at once aroused my suspicions. Anemia? The blood of three people was forced into the veins of my Mina, yet she died from loss of blood. Where did it go? The vampire attacks the throat. He leaves two little marks, white with red centers. Seward, you wrote me of these two marks on Mina's throat. An accident with a brooch pin, you said. So I suspected, I thought. I did not know. But I was out of the country and unable to help my Mina. When I received your wire, I came on the instant, and what do I find? The same two marks on Miss Lucy's throat. Another pin, Doctor. Do you mean to say you've built all this nightmare out of a pin? I confess, I can't tell you why she hid those marks. Oh, I could tell you that. What? Of course Lucy's trouble can't be that. I do believe it. This theory accounts for all the facts that nobody's been able to explain. We'll take her away where this thing can't get at her. She will know where to go. What? Also, the shock may be fatal. Why won't she? We tell her her life depends on it. Because the victim of the vampire becomes his creature, linked to him in life and after death. This is too much. Are you saying Lucy's become an unclean thing, a demon? Yes, Mr. Harker. Now will you help me? Yes, anything. Tell me what to do. Well, it's dangerous work. Our lives are at stake. But so is Miss Lucy's life. So is her soul. We must stamp out this monster. How do we stamp it out now? Well, this undead thing lies helpless by day in the earth or tomb in which it was buried. A corpse in a coffin. A corpse, if you like. But a living corpse. If we can find its earth home, a stake driven through the heart destroys the vampire. But this is our task. The police, all the powers of society, are as helpless as the dark. What bars or chains can hold a creature that can turn into a wolf or a bat? Wolf doctor, those dogs howling. I told you they howl that way in Eastern Europe when wolves are about. And Renfield. He what about him? Your friend Renfield does not like the smell of wolf spain. Good heavens, what's that got to do with all of this? Well, a vampire cannot stand the smell of wolf spain. Do you suspect that lunatic? I suspect no one and everyone. Tell me, who is this, this Count Dracula? Dracula? We know very little about him. When I was traveling in Transylvania, I heard of a castle Dracula, and a famous Guavo Dracula who fought the Turks, lived there centuries ago. And I will make inquiries by telegraph. But gentlemen, this thing must be English, or at least have died here. His lair must be near enough to his house for him to get there before sunrise. Ah, my friend, I have only the old beliefs which to fight this thing that has the strength of twenty men? Perhaps the accumulated wisdom and cunning of centuries. This all seems a nightmare, but I'm with you, Professor. Good. And you, Doctor? This all seems preposterous to me. <coughs> but I put the case in your hands. I need allies, not neutrals. Very well, I'll do as you will. Good. And bring your daughter here. What are you going to do? set a trap. Miss Lucy is the bait. My God, we can't let you do that. Ah, oh, there's no other way. I believe this thing knows I plan to protect Miss Lucy. This will put it on its guard, and the first moment she is alone, it will no doubt try to get at No, her. I forbid it. She's uh, my daughter, and I consent. We'll show the professor that he's mistaken. You allow it because you do not believe. I've heard that lunatic laugh. Life eating you said he was, and now you subject Lucy to that risk? I must be master here, or I can do nothing. I must know in what form this thing comes before I can plan how to stamp it out. Bring your daughter here. <coughs> Big pardon, sir. It's Dr. Seward here. And what do you want with him? No fly catchers escaped, sir. Escaped? How? Oh, blimey, out of the window. I was in the corner all the while, and it's a drop of 30 feet to the stone flagging below. He's a bloomin' flying squirrel, that's what he is, sir. Say nothing of this to Dr. Seward at present. Nothing. You hear? No go. Lucy here. It's all right. 
You have nothing to fear. Ah, here we are, my dear. Now, if you just lie here for a little while. Ah, uh, you trust me, don't you? I want you to just lie here for a little while. There. But I am so frightened. I know, my dear. Keep your mind passive. Try not to think. Sleep if you can. No, I dare not oh, sleep. I, it's when I, I sleep. I know, my dear, I know. And I will cure you with God's help. Father, I don't... You must do as the professor says. Come, Parker. Stay, Parker. Mina! Come to me, Papa. 
back in his room. <coughs> what? What's up? This is Dracula, who was said to have had dealings with evil spirits, 
He was the last of his race. But for many generations, the peasants have believed Castle Dracula inhabited by a vampire. Then it must be he. My friends, I am bewildered. But surely this confirms your suspicions. No, no. A vampire from Transylvania cannot be in England. Why? Because, as I have told you, the vampire must rest by day in the earth in which the corpse it inhabits was buried. In the earth? Yes, the vampire must return to its burial place before sunrise. <coughs> Count Dracula arrived in England on March the 6th. March the 6th? That's three days before Mina was first taken ill. His ship was wrecked on the rocks a few miles from the asylum. Only the Count and six packing cases survived. Did you learn what was in those cases? He told the customs people he wanted to see if Transylvania plants were grown a foreign climate in their native soil. Soil? What was in those boxes? Plain dead. He hired a lawyer to transport the coffin-like boxes to the abbey before sunrise. Oh, yes. Before sunrise. The king of the vampires, my friends. This creature is the terrible Voivod Dracula himself. He has prepared six coffins filled with the earth in which he must rest by day. By dawn, he, by sunset, he leaves his castle. By dawn, he is safe in one of his cases. A great risk. But he has triumphed. He has reached London with its teeming millions. With its opportunity, as he said. God protect my Lucy. I've got the addresses of four old houses he's leased in different parts of London, as well as Carfax. Yes, one of his coffins rests in each of those houses. Two heavy boxes were delivered at Carfax the day after he took possession. Yes, he has scattered them for safety. If we can find all six, we can destroy him. But how? His native earth will no longer receive his unclean form if each box is sanctified with holy water. Then we must get at these boxes, tear them open one by one. If we find it, then in God's name, Professor, I demand that my hands will drive the stake into that demon's heart no, and send no. his soul to hell. No, no, your plan is too dangerous. But why? These attacks on Lucy continue. Are we to delay why my child is dying? No, not for a moment. Patience, my friends, patience. This creature is more than mortal. His cunning is the growth of the ages. What if we find five of his boxes and close them against him, and we cannot find the sixth? Well, then he will bury himself in his last refuge and sleep until we are all dead. Then Lucy will be safe. Uh, for her life, yes. But his unclean kiss has claimed her for his own. When she dies, she will become as he is, a foul thing of the night. The vampire can wait. No, no, there is only one way to save Miss Lucy from him, to destroy him. But how? Surely with his power... Now we have one great advantage. By day he is a coffined corpse. Of our search he can know nothing if we leave no traces. God's delay. We must make the search of all his houses and find all six boxes without his knowledge, and then we act. But what about caretakers and servants? No, no, all the houses will be empty. The vampire plays a lone hand. <laughs> Redfield. Redfield. He's been here all the time we've been talking. Did you hear what we were talking about? I heard something. Enough. <coughs> Be guided by what he says. It's your only hope. It's her only hope. It is my only hope. Save my soul. Save my soul. I am weak. You are strong. I am crazy. You are sane. You are good. He is evil. I will save you, Redfield, <laughs> but you must tell me everything you know. Everything. No. What should I know? Why, I don't know anything. You, <laughs> you say I'm mad, and Dr. Seward will tell you about that. You mustn't pay any attention to anything I say. We can't waste time with this fellow. I'll have him taken away. Oh! Oh! And I thought you were wise, and the whole world is going mad just now. Madman serves him who is strong. Nothing. He 
him? Whom do you mean? Need we mention names among friends? Come now, Professor, what have I got to gain by being on your side? The doctor keeps me shut up all day, and if I'm good, he gives me a little sugar to spread out for my flies. On the other hand, if I serve him... The blood is the life. Hey, Renfield, what have you to do with Count Dracula? Dracula! You know the 
prescription is a most unusual one. The cut is not deep, Professor. I looked. No, but it will serve. As you know, now here is my medicine for Miss Lewis. <laughs> ah! ah! You do not care for the smell? You are a wise man, Professor, for one who has not lived even a single lifetime. You flatter me, Count. But not wise enough to leave now that you've learned what you've learned. I prefer to remain, even though a certain lunatic here attempted to kill me. Yes, while well, lunatics can be mm -hmm. difficult. Yeah. They even try to betray their benefactors. But when a servant fails to obey orders, the master must carry them out for himself. Yes, I anticipated as much. In the past 500 years, Professor, those who have crossed my path have all died. Some not pleasantly. Come here. Your will is strong, Professor. Then I will come to you. More medicine, Professor. More effective than Wolfsbane gun. Indeed. Ah, sacrilege! Sacrilege! I have a dispensation! God, then, Halsey, what was that? A revolver shot. It came as a relief. That, at least, is something human. Who broke the mirror? I... Oh, sorry, I startled you. I saw that infernal bat around the side of the house. I couldn't resist the shot. Did you hit it? Ah, uh, no. A bullet was never made, my friends, that could harm that bat. My weapons are stronger. What do you mean? Dracula has been here. Good God! How did he get in? Did you ask how the Vampire King during the hours of the dark, the hours that are his, comes and goes? As the wind, my friends, as he pleases. He came to kill me, but I carry a power stronger than his. What power? I expected an attack. I secured a dispensation from the Cardinal. I have with me the host. He came. I proved my case if it needed proof. The mirror does not reflect this man that was. When I cut my finger, it lapped at the blood. But before the sacred wafer, it fled. Lucy must not know. Ah, Miss Lucy knows more than you think. How can she? She knew something she'd tell me. No? As these attacks continue, she comes more and more under his power. There is a mystic link between them. Oh, I know it is hard to bear, but you must face it. It may be that he already can learn what passes in her mind. So she must not be told what we know of earth boxes. Or he may learn whatever she knows. Professor, that would mean that Lucy is in collusion with this creature, and that is impossible, impossible. You know what's been happening, Lucy. And so does the professor, and he knows how to help you. Is it not too late? No. No, Miss Lucy, it is not too late. Professor, you can save Mina's soul after her death. Can you save mine? No, Lucy. Yes. Miss Lucy, I swear it in God's name, and he has given me a sign in this room tonight. Then promise me one thing. Whatever you plan to do, whatever you know, do not tell me. Even if I beg you to tell me, swear that you will not. Now, while I am still myself, while I am still yours, promise it. I promise. No, no, you must not kiss me, Jonathan. Promise that you never will, not even if I beg you to. I promise. My dear Miss Lucy, from tonight on, one of us will keep awake all night in this room next to your bedroom with your door open. So good. And I will make this room safe for you. I 
bunch of Arabis about the window. Like this. I want you to rub it about the curtains and especially about the lock. Now, I have made this for you to wear tonight. You must wear it. Why you wear this? These dreams do not come to you. Promise me that you will not take these off. I promise. Swear it on the cross. I swear it. Professor, surely the host is more powerful than this wolf's thing. Of course. Then leave it with her. Then nothing can harm her. No. No, the host cannot be used where there has been pollution. What is it? It's Raphael, sir. Why haven't you got him locked because up? Because he's bought himself in. He has held the one of the patients. He has him by the throat. Ah, human blood now. Come, sir. Come, Harker. I should have had him taken away.
here, sir, having, so to speak, resigned, I don't have to put up with any more from any of you. What well, a man can't help, he can't help, and that's that. Can't you see, man, that Dr. Seward is not well? Will you desert him now when he needs all the help he can get? Putting it that way, sir, I ain't the man to run under fire. But I'm sick and tired of being told off for what ain't my fault. Yes, I know. We don't blame you. No boats or bask if old Renfield. Now, sir, you're talking sense. Mm. I had him in a straitjacket this time. Worked nearly all day yesterday, clamping bars across the windows. Now I find them bars pulled apart like they was made of cheese and him gone. Mm, then, then try to find him. Find him, sir. Find him. I can't chase him up and down the wall. I ain't no bloody mountain goat. <laughs> <laughs> this thing marks us. A few hours after he learns what we know and what we have found, he comes here and drags that poor creature of his to himself. What can the vampire want with Renfield? Mm. Renfield is serving an apprenticeship to join the vampire king when he dies. What does Renfield matter? If we are beaten, then there is no God. Ah, we dare not despair, Seward. But to figure out in advance what anyone would do who got on his track for him. Yes, I know. I thought we had him when we broke into Carfax and found two of his earth boxes, and then found one box in each of his four other houses. And when I pried up the lid of the sixth box, I thought, sure, we would find him there, helpless. It's empty. Mm, yes, an empty packing case, left as a blind. But he only brought six. There could be only one left. Yes, only one. But hidden where we can never find it. And now we put him on his guard. Yes. It's about a half an hour till sunrise. Poor John. He's been sitting up with Lucy for nine hours. But at dawn, he can rest and get some sleep, if anyone can get some sleep in this house. Whoever sleeps or does not sleep, Miss Lucy will sleep at dawn. Another horror. Yes, you've noticed how she keeps awake all night and sleeps by day. Is this part of the change? Of course. And sometimes the look that comes into her face. Don't, man. For God's sakes, I can't bear this. Ah, uh, you must face the fat sort. For her sake. But how could it have got at her? With the cross and the wolf's bane around her neck? Suggestion conveyed by the monster. Yes, he must have impelled the maid to take away the wolf's bane and cross and open the window. I should have foreseen that. Oh, don't blame yourself. The creature is more cunning than we are. Oh. But Lucy seems better. I had sunset last night. When she woke up after sleeping all day... There was blood in her cheeks? Yes, thank God. My poor friend. Where does that blood come from? What do you suggest now? What fresh horror? It's about half past five in the morning, a strange hour. The men want crazy to be up and about. We may get help from this thing that's still half human. Renfield. He's after me. He's going to kill me. Yes, well, we'll save you, Renfield, if you help us. Hugh. Hugh, poor, puny man. You measure your brains against his. You don't know what you're dealing with, you, a thick-headed chairman, a fool of an alias, a young cab of a boy. Why not all the soldiers and police in London could stop the master from doing as he likes? But God could stop him. God permits evil. Why does he permit evil if he is good? Tell me that. How did you get out through those iron bars? Madman, have a great strength, Doctor. Ah, come, Renfield. We know you didn't wrench those bars apart yourself. That's right. I wanted them there. I hope they keep him out. He did it. Then he called to me. And I had to come. The master is angry. He promised me eternal life. And lie things to eat. Big things, big things, not flies and spiders. And blood to drink. Always blood. I must obey him. Then I don't want to be like him. Oh, I'm mad, I know. And bad too, for I've taken lies. 
But they were only little lice. I wouldn't want a human life. <laughs> then why did I seek to betray him for you? I said I'd serve the devil, but I didn't serve him honestly. I don't like women. <laughs> Yet, I warned you. It made him angry. And now, perhaps he'll kill me. <laughs> and I won't get any more live things to eat. There'll be no more blood! No more blood! I won't get any more live things! Oh, you're gonna kill me! No! Lucy, darling, you mustn't mind that poor crazy creature. I don't. He amuses me. My dear, how can you say that? The poor devil. Thank God. Soon to be dawn now. Dawn? The ebb tide of life. How I hate the dawn. How can people like daylight? At night is when I'm really alive. The night was made to enjoy life. And love. Come to me, John. My own John. Oh, Lucy, I'm so glad to see you better and strong again. I've never been so well. So full of vitality. I was just a poor, washed-out, pale creature. I don't know what made you love me, John. There was no reason why you should. But there is now. I worship you. Then tell me something. If you love me, you will tell me. Don't turn away from me again. You made me promise not to tell you anything. Oh, but I release you from your promise. There now. What were you and father and the funny professor doing all day? I can't tell you. I promise. Oh, you say you love me, but then you don't trust me. I trust you with my life, my soul. Then prove it. What were you doing over there in Carfax? With that hammer and that horrible stake. Oh, you don't think that I'm asking you because... I just want to find out whether you really love me. So you try to hide your schemes and your plots. Afraid that I give them away, are you? You fools. Whatever he wants to know, he finds out for himself. He knows what you think. He knows what you do. He knows everything. Lucy! Oh, my dear, I am so sorry. Let me kiss away the tears. You mustn't kiss me. You made me promise not to let you kiss me. But you don't know why I said that, John, darling. It's because I love you so much, and I was afraid of what might happen. You've always thought me cold, but I've blood in my veins. Hot blood, my John. And I knew if I were to kiss you. But I'm not afraid now. Come, will you make me say it? Lucy, I don't understand you. I love you. I want to. Come to me, my darling. I want you. Lucy. Lucy, no. Lucy, no. No. Yes. Hawker, Hawker! Stay here, No! No! I warned you, my whole friend. Oh, thank God. Don't come to me, John. I'm unclean. Lucy, in my eyes, your purity itself. You love her, and in love there is truth. She is pure, and this evil thing that has entered her shall be rooted out. You said you could save Mina's soul. Mina's soul is in heaven. If I die, swear to me that you will do the same for me. It shall be done. I swear. My lover, and my father, and my dear friend, you have all sworn to save my soul. But now I am done with life. I cannot live on to become what you know. No, no, Miss Lucy. By all you hold sacred, you must not even think of suicide. That would put you in his power forever. I cannot face this horror that I am becoming. Then we 
shall find this thing that has followed your life, destroy it, and send its soul to hell, and it will be by my hand. You must destroy him if you can, but with pity in your hearts and not rage and vengeance. That poor soul who has done so much evil needs our prayers more than any other. No, you cannot ask me to forgive. Perhaps I too will need your prayers and your pity. Now, Miss Lucy, while you are yourself, please help me. How can I help you? Each no, no, you must not tell me. You must not tell me anything. Each time the white face, the red eyes came, you were pale, exhausted afterwards. But that last time... The last time he came, he said that I was his bride, and that he would seal me to him for centuries to come. And then? And then... No, I can't go on! I can't! But you must! You must, Lucy! I scratched open one of his veins. Pressed my mouth down to it. He made... He made me dr No, I can't go on! I can't! Go on! when I heard the dog howl. The dog's and the werewolf is above. Yes, he is pursuing Renfield. Oh my God, we must do something. Yes, and at once. I shall leave Renfield here as I did Miss Lucy. If the thing appears, we three shall bar its way. Bar? Against that? Yes, even against that. For we shall each carry the sacred element. And then? And then? And then I do not know. It will be terrible, for we do not know his full powers. But this I know. It will soon be done. The power of all evil things ceases with the coming of the day. His one last earth box is his only refuge, and we can keep him here until daybreak. He must collapse, and the stake and the hammer are ready.
I go. I go to sleep for a hundred years. That much you have accomplished against me, Van Helsing. But in a century I shall awake and call my bride to my side. My Lucy, no, my queen. I have other brides of olden times who await me in their vaults in Transylvania. But I shall set her above them all. You escape, we know how to save Lucy's soul, if not her life. Ah, the stake, yes. But only if she dies by day, I shall see that she dies by night. She shall come to an earth box of mine at her death and await her master to do to her what you did to my meaner Van Helsing. Then she shall die by day. You will kill her. You lack the courage, you poor rat of flesh and blood. Silence, John. He's doomed. He's just trying to trouble us afterwards. Six minutes. I thank you for reminding me of the time, Professor. Oh, Harker, open the window. That is the east. The sun will rise beyond the meadow there. The clouds are coloring. Drives deep. A pleasant task you set for yourself, Mr. Harker. Be ready when he collapses. I've got him. Hold him, Professor. The stake. Hold him, Doctor. I've got him. Hey! <laughs> the chimney is back. <laughs> God will not permit it. What are we to do now, Ben Helsing? We'll trick Renfield into showing us the way. Dare we leave Renfield here to become the slave when he dies? But he is human. We can't do murder. I'll do it if you won't, Doctor. Go to your office and get some painless drug. You're going to kill me. Master, save me. I'm coming to you. He has shown us the way. Where does this passage go? I never knew there was a passage there. That's from Dr. Seward. Lucy's gone. Mercy, 
Don't kill me! Renfield. You disappoint me.
afraid to look behind the curtain and they dread to see the face at the window. And they call it foolishness. And they tell themselves it isn't real. Well, well, such things do exist. <laughs>